Steven here with Neural DSP. And today I'm gonna to break down the features and components of the brand new archetype Corey Wong. For those of you who don't know who Corey Wong is, he's a funk jazz guitarist, an amazing composer, and you'll probably know his work best with the band Wolfpack. So let's go ahead and jump into breaking down the components of this plugin. So I am super excited about the archetype Corey Wong because it is a departure from any of the previous Neural DSP releases. It's a guitar suite that puts its main focus on clean to edge of breakup tones. Though you can really push it into that heavy saturated area, it really shines because it's more of a funk, blues, and jazz amp sim. It has a couple of effects that haven't really been used in the Neural DSP lineup so far, so let's go ahead and just jump into it. Taking a look at the plugin, we have all the same familiar features. We have the input gain knob, we have the gate knob, we have the mono to stereo mode switch, we have the oversampling switch, we have the presets section, and the output knob at the top. Just above that, we have the icons that correspond to each individual component section. At the bottom, we can click the icons to select the individual heads and cabinets we want. We can link and unlink them with this icon here. We have the MIDI mappings menu, and we have the tuner icon. And then in standalone mode, we have the audio settings menu, and we have the metronome, which you can tap tempo directly on the icon. So I'll be demoing the archetype Corey Wong with this Strandberg classic six string with the tremolo. I felt this one was gonna be particularly appropriate for the archetype Corey Wong, because the pickups are actually made by Michael Franks. They're a prototype set, and they're gonna have that more Fender-ish single coil vibe to them. So let's start with the first section, which is the wah pedal. Now, I have my Behringer FCB 1010 under my desk that I can actually control the wah with using MIDI controls. So now if you don't have a MIDI controller, you can activate the auto wah function. The sensitivity is gonna be the threshold at which when your signal goes past that threshold, it opens up the wah. The attack and the release are how fast the wah is going to open and close. And you'll want to be really careful with the sensitivity just to make sure that the wah doesn't stay open while you're playing a riff or stay closed while you're playing a riff too. Just imagine hitting that sweet spot. So like around 26 seems to be good for this particular riff. Maybe we turn the attack and the release to a little bit faster speed. So moving on to the next section, let's go ahead and take a look at the Postal Service Envelope Filter. Now much the same as the wah pedal, you're gonna have similar controls like the attack, decay, and sensitivity. The sensitivity is going to be the threshold, the attack is how fast the envelope opens, and the decay is how slow the envelope closes after the signal has gone below the threshold. In addition to the three knobs, we have the range knob, which is a frequency selector between 600 hertz and 1700 hertz. So note that dynamics really do matter when it comes to the envelope filter and you wanna make sure that you dial the sensitivity to that right level so that way the dynamics of your playing can kind of mess around with that threshold and open and close the envelope filter. So like there the sensitivity is too low so I'm not actually getting the envelope to open up. There, it's just too much. Next up, you have the fourth position compressor, which has the compression level, volume, and tone knobs, but I really like that it actually has a blend knob to it. That way you can still keep the dynamics of your original signal, but blend in a compressed version of your tone to the signal. Thank you. 
So next up we have the tuber and the big rig overdrive pedals. The tuber is gonna be more like your standard green overdrive pedal, where the big rig overdrive is gonna be more like a Klon overdrive pedal. Very different sounds, very different textures when it comes to the drive and the gain they can add to your signal. So I have them kind of dialed in fairly similarly on this individual preset. So I'm gonna turn them on and off and kind of mess around with them so you can hear what they sound like. <laughs> So let's go ahead and take a look at the heads. We have the Cory Wong DI Funk console. Now the really cool thing about this is if you are at all familiar with Cory Wong, you know that he does a lot of direct recording. He'll just plug his guitar straight into a console and just go. So what this is, is an amalgamation of some of the best aspects of console mixing, where he's taken some of the aspects from an SSL console and kind of like a Neve console to make this particular head. When we look at the controls, we have the compression with a slow and fast switch. We have some tube saturation. We have some high pass and low pass filters. And then we have the tone stack, low, mids, and highs with switchable bands. Now this is gonna be a great head, especially if you wanna do any mixing on bass as well. Next up we have the Clean Machine, which is again sort of an amalgamation of the most favorite aspects that Corey has of tube amps and solid state amps. Going over the controls, we have the volume knob, which controls the volume of the preamp section. You can get a bit of saturation if you push the volume knob. We have the bright switch, which gives a high shelf. We have our tone stack, bass, mid, treble, and presence knob, and our output level. I think that's one of the things I like about the Cory Wong the most is that it just encourages me to play around. Like my fingers actually hurt. I've actually been playing this so much the past few days that my fingers are sore and that hasn't happened to me in a really long time. So then we get to the third amp, which is probably my personal favorite. It's called the Amp Snob. Now this one's based off of a couple of different amp models, including the Dumble. But at the end of the day, this is one of Corey's creations and it is amazing. As with the Clean Machine, we have the volume knob, which controls the volume of the preamp section. You could push that to get some saturation, but this one actually includes a master volume control as well, which controls the push to the power amp section. You can get a lot of warmth, you can get a lot of saturation with the master volume control, and at default, it is boosted to the maximum. This one also has a bright switch, which puts a high shelf on your signal, but once the drive is activated, the bright switch is switched off internally. And of course, it also has the tone stack, bass, mid, treble, and presence knobs. So I did have a lot of fun with this one in particular for the demo that I created. And I've also started working on a couple of artist tones based on this amp alone. <laughs> So 
So let's take a look at this preset that I made. It's called Muddy Rock, and the drive switch is deactivated here, which sounds like this. So it's got a little saturation. I have the big rig overdrive on, I have the master volume control up and the volume up just a little bit as well. I have the middle knob up to its maximum. Sort of reminds me of like a Queens of the Stone Age kind of sound to it. We also added the nine band EQ, which is independent per channel. So if you have a preset where you're switching between heads, your EQ settings will remain independent to that specific head and channel. Moving on to the impulse response section, we have three cabinets in this amp sim. And as you can see, they are matched to each channel, but you can unlink them and choose a different cabinet per head. Now this gives you a huge amount of tonal variety at your fingertips. Now on default settings, we have the Ribbon 121, but we also have the Ribbon 160, Condenser 184, 414, 421, and the Dynamic 57. These are all gonna be pretty standard in the Neural DSP lineup at this point, but you can also load your own custom impulse response as well. Now to be fair, I really didn't mess around with the impulse responses too much because the rest of it just sounds amazing, but you can choose your position relative to the speaker cone, your distance, the volume level output, panning on if you have a stereo output, phase flip, and active or inactive, depending on if you wanna have one, two, or no impulse responses active. Honestly, I really just like the Ribbon 121 in its default position. So now we get to the effects section. I'm particularly excited about this one because this one has a lot of really great control and some really cool features to it. So first, let's start with the delay pedal. We have a single and dual mode, and in dual mode, we can choose the amount of time between your left and your right channels. So if we wanna have an eighth note in our left and a quarter note in our right, this is what it's gonna sound like. Turn on the mix knob. It has pretty much all the same controls you would find on other delay pedals. You have your mix knob, your feedback, you can sync it to your DAW or dial in the tempo directly. If we wanted to dial in our tempo, this is the knob we would use. And then we have our low pass and our high pass filters. Something I've been really having a lot of fun with recently is using a staggered left and right delay. So we have an eighth note on our left channel and an eighth dotted note in our right channel. Lastly, and certainly not least, is the Wash Reverb Pedal. Again, we're gonna find a lot of the same controls on this verb pedal as other ones. We have the Dry Wet Knob, the High Pass, Low Pass Filters, and the Decay Knob. By itself, it's a great reverb pedal, and I really love the sound of it. Probably the best addition to a verb pedal is the shimmer button, however. This adds an additional reverb tail on top of the signal that is pitched an octave higher of your signal. I'm not gonna lie, I probably spent about 20 or 30 minutes just playing around with this with the dry wet knob at maximum, just making cinematic creepy sounds.
All right, that is so much fun. Okay, so that is the archetype Cory Wong. And now that I've gone over the plugin and went over some of the features, I'm gonna go ahead and just play through a couple of the presets that I used for the demo and a couple that I've made up along the way and just hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Links to download the trial and my presets for the archetype Cory Wong are in the description box down below. While you're there, please leave a like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications on when we upload new content to this channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.